Price believes that religion was the result of primitive man's fear of the unknown and an attempt to explain the threatened phenomena of nature. He declared that he did not believe in God or in devil, virgin or saint and that religion throughout time had been used by kings and priests to keep the people down. Price had plenty to say about the church. He hated its gloomy sermons and Puritan preachers. They would thunder cannons at each other throughout his life. The chapel preachers never lead the people except at funerals. They are always on the side of the rich and are merely concerned in seeing that the people believe in the divine origin of landlords and masters. The hierarchy of the church was furious and retaliated by spreading dark rumours about Christ and his heathen ways. Week after week, they would use the pulpit to incite fear and hatred amongst the faithful. On one occasion, the preachers invented a story whereby Price was supposed to have desecrated the grave of his father, removed his body and cut off his head in some pagan ritual. The truth was that Price exhumed the body and performed a post-mortem in order to settle a law case concerned with his father's mental illness. These stories, however, had the desired effect, and even those people who had been tolerant of Price now turned against him. Dr. William Price, having offended the year of the church with his outspoken denunciation of Christian worship, went on to offend their eyes with his appearance. His plaited hair and beard he grew as long as nature allowed. Upon his head he wore a large fox's skin. Its legs and tail hung pendant to his shoulders. Tight trousers of red and green stripes and scarlet waistcoat with gold buttons was his everyday uniform. He claimed that his dress was the traditional attire of the ancient founders of the Druidic system. His interest in paganism can be traced back to the youths who roamed the hills naked, dancing and chanting as he went. We must remember that pont aux and this area in the middle of the last century was very different to what it is today. It was much more like, say, North Wales, Gwynedd today. The overwhelming majority of the people were Welsh and they were Welsh speaking. The Iron Masters, who were overwhelmingly English, treated the people of South Wales in an almost colonial manner. Uh, the Welsh language and Welsh culture were to them an inferior culture. Price was one of the few people who had the nerve to stand up against this kind of cultural colonialism. And that is what his attempts to revive Druidism and some of his quite bizarre Druidic activities were in fact about. Thus on moonlit nights, he visited these ancient burial grounds on Pontypridd Common and astride this rocking stone performed self-styled druidic rites, chanting the song of the primitive bard to the moon, to the astonishment of onlookers. Heads and steelworks had replaced the rural landscape alive with pagan festivals, tradition and crafts. He saw his nation of free thinkers and dreamers being speedily industrialised, despoiled and abused by a ruling class with no concern for his Celtic heritage. Price believed that his contemporary Druids, the High Welsh, were a close society of dour ceremonialists who offered small inspiration to the working class people of Wales. In an attempt to redress this cultural imbalance, he printed and distributed a pamphlet describing his intention to build a mighty tower on the ancient site of the rocket stone. The tower was to be a hundred foot high and would contain a museum, 
a scientific institution, and most importantly, a free school for the children of the poor. Here, the language, the music, and the culture of the ancient Britons will be taught. To Price's dismay, the response was not as he had anticipated. I imagined, like a child, there would be no difficulty in inspiring in the whole length and breadth of Britain a thousand ladies and gentlemen to subscribe a sovereign each. I see a vote in the House of Commons granting £70,000 for repairing a Queen's stables for a few horses and uh, about uh, 30,000 of the people's own money for educating a whole nation of 26 million, laughing me in the face. Price was left frustrated and disappointed by his failure to build a centre of Druidic culture for his people. Perhaps the nation was not yet ready for his new age ideals, or perhaps he had not sold his vision in the right way. Whatever the reason, he did not have time to dwell on the matter. Events for once overtook him. A national outcry for a wider democratic government and fundamental changes in the system of government was developing in the form of the Chartist movement. Working people banded together and set out their demands to the government in the form of a People's Charter. Its principles of increased rights for workers and the rebellious nature of the struggle reflected Price's feelings and fired his imagination. Firstly, he attacked the Coal Kings. You are the Welsh pharaohs who think you can suck the lifeblood of the colliers forever. You have grown fat and prosperous. You own the big houses, you wear the finest clothes, your children are healthy and happy, yet you do not work. How then you have got these things by idleness? Remember that the oppression of the pharaohs of Egypt did not last forever, and neither will the oppression of the blood-sucking pharaohs of Wales. 